Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good day, my viewer at home. It is another wonderful day, beautiful day that the Lord has made. In it, I believe testimony abound in your life. And my prayer for you is that as you receive this testimony on a daily basis, according to the word of God that says, Blessed be our Lord God who daily loaded us with benefit. The benefit, the blessing of today, cannot elude you. And all that you have received shall be permanent in your life. As we go into this day, December 8th devotion, the Lord's presence will abide with us. Let us pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, eternal rock of ages, our present help in the time of trouble, the lions of the tribe of Judah, we bless your holy name for great things you have done in our lives. Father, we say thank you for washing over us. Lord, thank you for making us untouchable for the enemies. Be thou exalted, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we are, have come together to feast on your word, Father, feed us with your word again and make us, make your blessing to us abound forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The topic we are considering today you know, a daily fountain of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion is His presence. His presence. And the Bible reading for today is taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 33, and I will be reading from verse 12. I want you to read along with me. Make sure you are there with your Bible. And let us read together. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou seest unto me, bring up these people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up ends. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth? And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and we be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou cannot. See my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is no place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in a cleft of the rock, 
and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away my hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For this morning devotion, I pick my text from the same book of Exodus we have just read, and that is Exodus chapter 33, verse 14. And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And I will give thee rest. Beloved brothers and sisters at home, father and mother, if you need rest, you need the presence of God. There are some people that do experience what is called peace in the midst of storm. They will be passing through troubles of life, storms of different kinds, of different range, of different level, of different grade, but you will not know in their life because they are carrier of the presence of God that have given them rest of mind in the midst of troubles. I want to bring to our memory, there's a saying that says, experience is the best teacher. Here in this Bible passage, Moses requested for the presence of God in their journey to the promised land. He knew what he had suffered in the hands of Aaron and of his co-laborers. The stubbornness of the people he was leading, their murmuring, complaints, oftentimes they forsook God and follow after Hydro. How they made him hungry to the extent of breaking the tablet containing Ten Commandments, in which he had to go and spend another 40 days and 40 nights without food and water. Of a truth, Moses was one of the great ministers of God. And God have to say something about him that is the most meekest man on earth. Despite all this commendation, do you know Moses did not get to the promised land. He asked for the presence of God to go with him. The presence of God was with him, but the problem he had, why he could not get to the promised land, was that right from the day one, God called him to go, and that he called him that he would be the one that would deliver his people from the land of slavery. You know, Moses complained that day, and that was the day God could have done great things in his life that would help him to get to the promised land. But Moses did not allow God to achieve that in his life. And that was why, because people may begin to wonder, uh, with the presence of God with Moses, why he didn't get to the promised land. Brother and sisters, right from day one, and that is why I want to call your attention to that, every one of us. When the Spirit of God is calling our attention on some things in our life, to change, let us be submissive to God and allow Him to do the work in our life. Let's see Exodus chapter 3. I read from verse 10. Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I, that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee, that I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people of Egypt. Ye shall serve God upon this mountain. Verse 13, And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, shall say unto them, the God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto him? 
And God said unto him, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am that sent me unto you. This was Moses' encounter with God in the first place, that God called him. He, he dialogued with God, and he wanted to have that assurance that it was God that was sending him. And God gave him 100% assurance that I will be with you. That was another encounter of Moses because of somehow doubt in his heart, because of his background, his nature, uh, whom he was uh, as a stammerer. He presented his case before God, and God also gave him appropriate answer to that case. But Moses did not believe God. Let's see Exodus chapter 4, verse 10. And Moses said unto the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither eat at all for, for since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. Verse 11, that is Exodus chapter 4, verse 11. And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb, or deaf, or the sin, or the blind? Am I not the Lord? And Moses, and now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. Look at the response of Moses in verse, uh, in verse 13. And he said, O my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hands of him whom thou will send. Look at what God said to him in verse 14. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, Is he not, is not Aaron the Levite, thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he can speak well. He can, he, he, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he said thee, he will be glad in his heart. Can you see? How Moses forced God to involve Aaron in his ministry. Originally, Moses, Aaron was not in the original plan of God for Moses. But Moses forced God. That was the genesis of his problem. Because God has promised that he will take away his weak point. He will remove it. He will take, surely take care of it. But Moses did not believe God to that extent. He forced God to involve Aaron in his ministry. And that was why he could not get to the promised land. Because the hunger was still there. God was about to take away the hunger. And God said, no. Moses said, no, God, I can handle this problem by myself. I've been dealing with my hunger right from that time up to date. But I need somebody. And Aaron was forced into the... And you know the role Aaron played in the ministry of Moses. He was the one that created image, idol with earrings for the people of Israel as their new God. I pray that in the name of Jesus, every weak point in our life, the Lord will take care of it in Jesus' name. Whatsoever that we are still bat battling with, secretly or openly, that will not give us the enablement to get to the end of the race and inherit the kingdom of God, the Lord will take care of them in Jesus' name. Let us present them to God and is able, is faithful in all is dealing with us. What does it mean for the presence of God to abide with his people. Number one, the presence of God means God's glory, covering his children. I repeat again, the presence of God means God's glory, covering his what? His children. I mean the Shekinah glory of God that man or demons or devil himself cannot behold, cannot look into. Yes, when you carry the presence of God, you become a, the carrier of the glory of God. Let us examine this in the life of Moses. In Moses' encounter with the presence of God, we can see that in Exodus chapter 34, verse 29 to 31. And it came to pass, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of testimony in, in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mount, that Moses we not that the skin of his did not know that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, 
and they were afraid to come near him. I repeat again, they were afraid to come near him. Moses became carrier of God's presence, God's glory, that no devil, no man, no demon could look into. When you carry the presence of God, you are carrying the glory of God. And no demon can behold the glory. We are talking about Shekinah glory. The glory that will blindfold every wicked one's eyes. If they look into your life, your business, when your business carries the presence of God, I'm telling you, I'm giving you this assurance that the enemy cannot tamper with you. You become untouchable for the enemy to behold. I say you become untouchable for the enemy to behold. Desire it to be a carrier of the presence of God. Number two, the presence of God means God's power and authority in the life of his children. When you are carrying about the presence of God, you carry about the power and the authority of God. The power and the authority of God. Don't forget, you know, Jesus Christ promised that in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, that when the people, uh, his disciples, wait upon him, wait upon him, and in the day of the Pentecost, they will receive power through the Holy Spirit. And that promise is also for us these days. The promise is also for us. And that is the baptism of the Holy Ghost we are talking about. If you are a believer, you are there, you have given your life to Jesus Christ, you have not experienced baptism of the Holy Ghost, you cannot go far in the race. You cannot go far. It's not possible. It's not possible. It's not possible, I repeat again. It's not possible. Because the, 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 the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life signifies the presence of God in our life. You no know, Christ has promised it, that He is going, and He will give us the Holy Spirit. And that is what God is talking about here. Let's see what happened in the life of the disciples of Jesus Christ when Jesus Christ was still alive and he sent them out. The power of God and authority in your life will make demons and devils to bow for you. You will become untouchable. I read from Luke chapter 10. I will read verse 1 and go straight to verse 17 to 19. The disciple of Jesus Christ encounter with the presence of God. After these things, that is verse 1, this thing, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. I want to encourage believers at this time. The only profitable business God is after is so winning. Yes, because the word of God says God will have all men to be saved. And that all should come to the knowledge of truth. You know, these days, the church of God is no longer embarking on mission. We don't go and fish the, the, the lost souls in the world again. We stay put in the church. We remain in the church. And we have forgotten the word of, of our Lord Jesus Christ that says, he, You that have been saved, arise for the salvation of others. But we don't do that again. We don't do that again. We don't do that again. And we want to experience the presence of God. That is not possible. That is not possible. Please make up your mind today to be engaged in this profitable business of God. And that is a soul winning. So winning. Let us embark on mission work at this time. And God will give us the enablement to do it according to his mind. And according to his might as well in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me go straight to verse 17. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us. Even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. That name is so powerful. The name of Jesus Christ. It's a powerful name. It's a wonderful name. It's a name that devil cannot withstand. It's a name that be, the, the demons cannot withstand. It's a name that evil forces cannot withstand. It's a name that witches and wizards cannot withstand. It's a name that demons cannot withstand. But we don't believe so much in that name. We go for alternative. We go and seek help from where there is no help. Can you see it here? Demons bow. Just by seeing the disciples, they bow and they bow. And they will bow for you. I said, demons will bow for you. And he said unto them, I behold Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions 
and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall be enemies or you. Can't you see? This is our heritage. Believers, this is our heritage. Believers, this is our heritage. This is our spiritual birthright. But it's a pity. We say pity. We are not enjoying this grace of God. We are not enjoying this blessing of God to the maximum. We are not enjoying them. You can, you can, I think you can see believers that are still experiencing evil dreams. Hitting in the dream. Having intercourse with demons. Kai. Why, why, why should, we allow, should we allow this to happen in our life? If you carry the presence of God, you become untouchable. Evil dreams will disappear. I say evil dreams will disappear. Sickness will disappear. Because our body is the temple of the living God. What is sickness looking for in our body? What is it looking for? Because we don't carry his presence. And that is why we still, witness, we still experience all this depression, oppression from the kingdom of darkness. And we have forgotten. We have been translated from a particular kingdom, and that's the kingdom of darkness, and translated to the kingdom of his dear son and the kingdom of his son, Jesus Christ. Where sickness cannot reign there. But why? what is happening to us, believers at home, viewers at home? What is happening to us? It is because we lack the presence of God. I pray as you are listening to me, somebody will be renewed in his heart or her heart and grab the message and say, enough is enough. And say no to demons and say no to Satan. And God's presence will abide with us in Jesus' name. Number three, what does it mean to carry the presence of God? The presence of God means God's anointing. It means God's anointing. Let us see Acts chapter 10 verse 38. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Can you see it now? When you, yeah, when you carry the presence of God, you are carrying the anointing of God, special anointing. I'm not talking about the one with oil. In this. Yes, that is a symbol. But the new anointing, divine ordination, that you, when you carry it, demons will know that you have the anointing. And by the reason of the anointing, the yokes are broken. I say by the reason of the anointing, the yokes are broken. Because the anointing of God will generate the power of God. And it will break all manners of yoke in your life. It will break the yoke of sin, the yoke of sickness, yoke of evil dreams, yoke of Satan oppression, yoke of spiritual husband and wife, yoke of barrenness, yoke of sorrow, yoke of backwardness, yoke of delay in marriage yoke of debts. It will break them into pieces and it will break the yoke of poverty. Our nation is poor today because we lack the presence of God. We have many churches, we have many believers, but we lack the presence of God because of our sinful life. Brethren, let us come back to God. Let us come back to God so that God also will visit us with his presence. He will visit us with his power. Who are the, the, these uh, Fulani herdsmen, the kidnappers? Who are they to, to embarrass us, to embarrass the power and the grace of God in our life? Let us come back to God and His presence will abide with us forever in Jesus' name. The last point I want to emphasize on about the presence of God. The presence of God will give you rest from all battles of life. The presence of God will give you rest from all battles of life. What do I mean? What do, what do I mean by that? You become more than conqueror. You become more than conqueror. Let's read it again in Exodus chapter 33 verse 14. That says, And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And I will give thee rest from all battles of life. Many believers are facing battle. And they have become prey to the first prophet. Yes. After worshiping in the, many of our churches in the morning on Sunday, they will still go another place because they don't have rest of mind. Because they don't have the presence of God in their life. Beloved, beloved brothers and sisters, stop running at a scatter. Stop running from pillar to post. Come back to God and let God rest upon you. Let God rest upon you. Jesus Christ also said it in Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 that says, Come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heaven laden, I will give you rest. Do you need rest from all manners of problems of life? Come back to Jesus. Come back to him, and he will surely give you rest. For us to be carrier of God's presence, we need to go into his presence every day of our life. 
Let us pray. Our most high God, we say thank you. Once again, for you are God that love us so much. You first love us. And Father, we pray, give us the grace, O Lord, the enablement to come into your presence on a daily basis so that we can be carrier of your presence as well. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.